Welcome to another deep dive. You know we love a good mystery around here, and the one you sent us this time definitely had us hooked. For a decade, a strange sound, they're calling it the bio-wing, has been echoing through the Mariana Trench, and nobody had any idea what was making it. It really is a reminder, isn't it? Like how much we still don't know about the ocean. Totally. And get this, thanks to some serious scientific detective work, we finally have an answer. Bride's whales. Bride's whales, who would have thought? Right. But it's more than just knowing what made the sound. It's about understanding these incredible creatures, the bride's whales, I mean, and how they're being affected by a changing ocean. Absolutely. This bio-wang, it's like a window into their world, how they live, how they move through the ocean. Exactly. So let's rewind a bit. What were some of the initial clues that made scientists even think a whale was behind all of this? Well, the first guess was that it was a baleen whale. You see, unlike toothed whales like dolphins or orcas, Baleen whales have these plates in their mouths, baleen plates, to filter food out of the water. Right, have those instead of teeth? Exactly. And some baleen whales are known to make these really strange, almost Star Wars sounding calls. So it wasn't a totally crazy idea, but how do you even go about proving that a specific whale is making a specific sound, especially in a place as massive and deep as the Mariana Trench? Yeah, it's not easy, that's for sure. It really takes a perfect storm of someone being in the right place at the right time. Someone on a boat has to actually see a whale making that sound. And to make things even harder, bride's whales, they aren't exactly the easiest to track. They're spread out all over the place. So it's like finding a needle in a haystack. A moving haystack. Pretty much. Talk about a scientific challenge. Yeah. But they did it. They actually Sorry. figured it out. They did. They did. So they compared sightings of bride's whales with underwater recordings that were taken around the Mariana Islands. I can't even imagine how much data they had to go through. Oh, it was a ton, over 200,000 hours of audio. Thank goodness for AI, because I don't know how they would have done it otherwise. No kidding. But finally, they had their eureka moment. They found that bride's whales were there in nine out of 10 of the recordings where the bio wang was recorded. Wow, nine out of 10, that's definitely not a coincidence. <laughs> so mystery solved. It's official, the bio wang is made by bride's whales. But of course, now we've got even more questions. Like, what does this sound mean for the whales? Why are they making it? And what does it tell us about their lives? Like, for starters, what's the deal with bride's whales anyway? They're not exactly the most famous whales out there. Right, they're not like the humpbacks or anything. Exactly. And we don't know nearly as much about them as we do some other species. For one thing, they don't do those big migrations to the polar regions like some other baleen whales. Mm -hmm and they're spread out across the open ocean, which makes them tough to study. So they're not making those epic journeys to go feast on krill in the Arctic or Antarctic. So what do they eat then? Well, they're what we call opportunistic feeders, meaning they're not too picky. Krill, sardines, anchovies, they'll go for whatever's plentiful. It's all about following the food. Yep. You know, They basically let the ocean currents and climate patterns tell them where to go. And those currents and patterns are changing all the time. Exactly. I also read that there are actually two separate populations of bride's whales just in the western North Pacific. That's right. And apparently this bio wang sound, it's unique to that region. Yeah, unlike other calls that have been recorded from bride's whales in other parts of the world. So it's like this sound is specific to these western North Pacific whales. Like their own little fingerprint. That's amazing. Yeah. But why make such a strange sound in the first place? And how does it connect to how they navigate the ocean? Yeah, that's the real head scratcher, isn't it? What's the purpose of this sound for these whales? Well, it's more than just a sound. It's like a clue. A clue that tells us about their migration patterns. Oh, really? Yeah. So by looking at when and where these sounds were recorded, researchers were able to map out their migration route. It seems they make a round trip past the Mariana Islands and Wake Island. So they're going back and forth. Exactly. It's a biannual migration. Twice a year. Wow. So we know they aren't going to the poles, but they're definitely on the move. What's driving these journeys? Food, of course. Remember we were talking about them following their food sources? Right. They're opportunistic feeders. Exactly. And the recordings actually revealed two distinct periods when the bio wang was way more common. A bigger peak from August to November and then a smaller one from February to April. Interesting. It's two separate migrations. It seems that way at it. These peaks, they line up perfectly with their movements between low and mid latitudes. They're following a specific feeding ground called the transition zone chlorophyll front. The what? No? Yeah, it's a mouthful, I know. The TZCF. The TZCF, got it. So basically, it's like a giant underwater buffet for these whales. It's where different water masses meet. 
and all that mixing creates an upwelling of nutrients. And nutrients mean? Phytoplankton. You know those microscopic algae that are like the bottom of the food chain? Right. It all starts with phytoplankton. Exactly. And where you have lots of phytoplankton, you get krill sardines, anchovies, all the good stuff that bride's whales love to eat. So it's like a feeding frenzy. Pretty much. And the interesting thing is that the location of this buffet, it changes throughout the year. And the whales, they're tracking it with incredible accuracy. Wow. So they're following this moving feast all over the ocean. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But here's where things get a little tricky. Remember how we talked about climate change earlier? Yeah. How could I forget? Well, studies are showing that the TZCF, it's being impacted by climate change. Oh, no. That's not good. No, it's not. It's shifting, potentially pushing those prime feeding grounds further north, which means the whales, they have to travel even further to find their food. And that's a problem. Think of it like this. If you have to take a longer route on a road trip, you're going to burn through more gas, right? Sure. It's the same for these whales, except their gas is food. And finding enough food might already be a challenge with the feeding grounds moving. Exactly. They need enough energy to make these longer journeys, mm -hmm. but also to reproduce and keep their population healthy. Right. It's not just about making it from point A to point B. And this is where those variations we were talking about earlier, the fact that some years had way fewer bio wang recordings. Right. Right. That could be a sign that fewer whales could even make the trip some years. Because they were running low on energy. Exactly. They just couldn't afford to make the trip. Wow. That's pretty alarming. So what does this mean for their future? Could climate change actually end up silencing their unique call? The big question. Brides whales, they're known for being adaptable. Right. They'll eat pretty much anything. But there's only so much they can take. The question is, will their bio wang be affected by all of this? by this change in migration, and maybe even what they're eating. Will they develop new calls? Maybe. Or will the bio wang just fade away, become another casualty of a changing ocean? It's kind of eerie when you think about it that way. The sound that was such a mystery could just disappear as these whales try to adapt to a world that's changing so fast. It really makes you think, doesn't it? It does. We started with this weird sound, and now we're talking about the impact of climate change on an entire species. It really shows how interconnected everything is. It makes you wonder what else is happening out there. What other changes are happening beneath the surface? What other mysteries are waiting to be solved? That's the beauty of a good deep dive, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks for joining us for this one. And we'll see you next time as we explore another corner of our amazing world.